Welcome to Electron Line. The next example is set up to show you that sometimes it's difficult to figure out what the area even looks like and whether or not the functions actually even cross so that there will be an area between the functions. Or in other, way, in other words, uh, which function is higher than the other one and whether or not they cross. So let's go ahead and take a look at these two. We have y equals the square root of x minus 1 and y equals 1 third x plus 1 third. So let's go ahead and try to graph these. The first one, y equals the square root of x, that would simply be a function from the origin that looks like this, but since it's the square root of x minus 1, it's shifted to the right by 1, so it's going to start at this point right here when x is equal to 1, and it's going to look like this. Now when we graph the other function, y equals 1 third x plus 1 third, it starts up here, and now the question is, does it cross over the function or does it go over the function like this? So which way does it go? It's not always clear. And to, to determine that, what we should do is to see if there are crossing points when we solve those two simultaneously. When we set the two functions equal to each other, for example, when we say that the square root of x minus 1 is equal to 1 third x plus one third and solve this for x to see if there's actually points where they cross one another. Okay, let's square both sides. We'll factor out a one third. So we have um, x minus one is equal to one third times x plus one quantity squared. So we square both sides. And when we do that on the right side, we get x minus one equals one ninth times x squared plus 2x plus 1. And then we move the 9 across here. We get 9x minus 9 is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1. And then we subtract the left from the right. We get 0 is equal to x squared minus 7x plus 10. And it looks like we can factor that. So we have 0 is equal to x minus 5 times x minus 2, which means that when we solve these simultaneously, we have x is equal to 5 or x is equal to 2, which means the two functions do cross one another at those two values of x. So then graphing the second function, it will look something like this, like so. And there are two points where the function crosses, the first point when x equals 2 and the second point when x equals Five, which means we now also want to find the y-coordinates of those two points. So here, let's see here, when x equals 2, we have 2 thirds plus a third, which is 3 thirds, which is 1. And the second point is when x equals 5, that's 5 thirds plus a third, which is 6 thirds, which is 2. So those are the two points where they cross, and we're trying to find the area in between. So again, notice that sometimes it's not that clear which way the functions look, how they overlap one another, if they do, and when they ask for the area in between, is it the area like this, or if this function came like this, then you'd find the area in between there. So sometimes you need to figure all that out first before you actually can start integrating. The next thing we want to do is label the functions. So this function right here, we can say that y is equal to 1 third x plus 1 third, and this function right here, we can say, let's draw a little arrows, we can say that this function here, y equals the square root of x minus 1. And since that one is on top here, we'll call that y2. This one, let's call that y1. And now we can identify an area element. Let's go this way. So there's our little dA, which is equal to the upper line, which is uh, y2 minus the lower line, which is y1, that's the height of that area element, times the width, which is dx. And now we can go ahead and say that the area is equal to the integral of the da's, which is equal to the integral of y2 minus y1 times dx. And since we're going to integrate over x, that means we need x limits, so x will go from 2 to 5. And now we have to plug in what these are equal to. So let's go ahead and say that this is equal to, from 2 to 5, of y2. Now y2 is the square root of x minus 1. So that would be uh, x minus 1 to the 1 half power 
minus y1, which is one third x, and that would be minus one third because we have to subtract that function so that those terms would become negative, put brackets around it, times dx, and we're ready to go and integrate. Now luckily here, notice that the integrand of this, or the differential I should say of this, is a dx only, so that's good. So we can go ahead and integrate this. So this becomes equal to x minus 1 to the 3 halves power divided by 3 halves minus 1 third x squared divided by 2 and minus 1 third x evaluated from 2 to 5. I'm going to simplify that just a little bit. So this becomes equal to 2 thirds times the quantity x minus 1 to the 3 halves power. Here, divide by 2, that's minus 1 sixth x squared, and that's minus 1 third x evaluated from 2 to 5. So both limits, upper and lower, will uh, make a difference here. So let's plug in the upper limit. So we'll plug in a 5 here, we get 5 minus 1, which is 4. Take the square root, which is 2 cubed, gives us 8. 8 times 2 over 3 gives us 16 over 3. Plugging in 5 over here, that's 25 divided by 6. Mm -hmm. 25 divided by 6, that's a negative, so minus 25 divided by 6. Plug in the upper limit, we get minus 5 over 3. And we take that, which is the result of the upper limit, minus the result when we plug in the lower limit. Plug in the lower limit, we get 2 minus 1, which is 1. 1 times 2 thirds. And here, plug in the lower limit, we get 4 divided by 6, that's 4 6, that's 2 thirds minus 2 thirds. And here we have, uh, plug in the lower limit, we get 2 thirds, oh, again, another minus 2 thirds. So this 2 thirds cancels out that 2 thirds, this minus times this minus is plus. And let's write everything over 6, so that would be 32 over 6 minus 25 over 6, minus 10 over 6, and this minus times this minus makes that a plus 2 thirds, which is 4 over 6. Everything is over 6 now, so let's see here, that's um, 36, 32 plus 4 is 36, minus 35, that would be equal to just exactly 1 over 6 for the total area between those two curves. As you can tell, it's not a lot, it's positive, which kind of gives us the feeling that we probably did it correctly. If we end up, of course, with a negative value, that definitely would show that there's probably a problem somewhere, and we'd have to go back and check for an answer. But I'm fairly confident that one sex is probably the correct answer, and that's how it's done.